Hi, I'm Jenny Brown. Welcome to MFB News. Thank you for joining us this week. I hope you're keeping well. Um, all good here. We are on the move. We exchanged contracts last week and we are moving out on Friday of this week. And as you can tell um, from what you can see behind me, my packing is going incredibly well. Um, the one thing I've done is managed to remove the contents of the notice board. So I've got quite a lot to do between now and Friday morning. Um, now, in terms of what we've got for you this week, there's actually been a lot of really interesting news um, floating around. So we've got some pricing changes, a lot of lender criteria changes. Then I'm gonna be talking to you um, some more about the property market, some current and concerns that politicians are expressing in regard to the private rental sector. And then we're just gonna to touch on EPCs as well. So loads of great content for you today. First up this week, Paragon have released four new products um, on five year fixed rates. Um, so the products have been released at 70% loan to value and 75% loan to value. And they start from 2.95%. Now they're offering free mortgage valuations and £750 cash back on these products. Um, and the um, pricing varies depending on the loan to value and also whether your property has um, an EPC rating of A to C and is therefore classified as green or, um, or not. Now in terms of the products, they're really, really competitive when you consider particularly some of the types of properties and um, kind of entities that Paragon will lend to. So first of all, individuals and limited companies. Um, people can have, and companies as well, um, no maximum number of properties in the background. Um, they do require the applicants to have income of £25,000 per year. That can be from rental income. In terms of the limited company offering, um, they're able to lend to SPVs. The SPVs can be owned by people or we can have a layered um, structure, so a company owned by a company, owned by people, that's no problem for Paragon. But where, really where their products, I think, come into their own is the types of properties they can lend on. So what they're able to do is lend on HMOs of up to 20 rooms or multi-units of up to 20 self-contained units. Now, when you consider that their cheapest rate is um, a five-year fix at 2.9%, um, and has an arrangement fee of £3,000. That really gives you the kind of flavour that to be able to mortgage a block of flats of up to 20 you know, self-contained units on a five-year fix at 2.9 with a, you know, just under £3,000 of arrangement fee, free valuation, and you get cash back. You know, that really is an incredible offering. It's really, really strong there. Um, but like I said, there's lots of different offerings available for green and non-green products. And we really like working with Paragon. They're a very good lender um, to deal with. And they've got some great bits of lending policy in there as well. So an absolutely cracking offering from them this week. Accord Mortgages have released three new products in the last week, which are five-year fixed rates with no early repayment charges. And the pricing here starts from 2.39%. Now, um, invariably, um, any fixed rate with no early repayment charge is going to cost more than a fixed rate with a repayment charge because obviously there's more kind of fix, um, risk from the lender. They've had to kind of almost hedge you um, sort of committing to the deal for a period of time in terms of their pricing matrix. Um, but look, the flexibility that this gives people is actually very, very useful in certain situations. And another lender called um, the Coventry Building Society, their buy to let arm, the uh, Godiva, offer a similar product. And we really, really um, rave about it, actually. We think it's brilliant. So look, in terms of Accord and the kinds of people they're lending to. So first of all, we're only looking at personal applications, no limited companies. You can be up to 75 years old at the point of application. There's no minimum income requirement and the minimum property value they need to see is £75,000. They don't mind how many properties you've got in the background, but no more than 10 of those can have a mortgage on them. Now, one of the things that they do consider, um, are happy to lend on, is consumer buy-to-lets and let-to-buys. And the reason I think that while this isn't by no means unique in terms of being a lender that offers this, um, one of the kind of scenarios that I envision and see this actual product working really, really well in is as follows. Um, I live in a property, I'm going to rent it out and buy a new main residence. Um, I think I'm going to enjoy being a landlord, but I'm not entirely sure. So what I'm going to do is take this five year fixed rate, enjoy the absolute certainty of payments for a five year period. But actually, if I start renting the property out and actually I really don't enjoy it, it's not for me. I can sell the property, pay off the mortgage within the five years. I'm not going to get charged for it. Likewise, if someone was looking to rent the property out and essentially um, break the situation of having a chain, 
um, they were planning on only renting out for maybe a year and then selling on. Um, and the benefit here is obviously that you'd then you'll be able to recoup your 3% surcharge on the property which you've just bought. Um, it can also work really, really well for that. So there's lots of great different scenarios for this, but actually it's a really good product and it's really good to see a corp sort of going into an area pioneering a territory that is actually very underutilised in the buy to space and they've never been in before. Now the Yorkshire have reduced their pricing on five year fixed rates so their pricing now starts from 3.05%. Now the Yorkshire are an interesting one um, because they are um, traditionally a commercial lender who also do buy to lets for limited companies only so they won't do any buy to lets for individuals which is kind of the total opposite of what we're used to seeing. Um, so they're happy to lend to trading companies and SPVs and really beyond that their lending criteria is relatively loose. So they can consider um, very unusual share structures, um, people with um, complex income situations, unusual property types, unusual titles, um, all this kind of stuff. They're really able to kind of get their heads around deals um, which are kind of falling outside of the norm. Now, in addition to their offering um, on the um, sort of more traditional type of things, they've also reviewed their holiday let offering and increased the locations where they're okay to lend um, to include um, affluent coastal areas, national parks and city centre locations as well. Now, in terms of Yorkshire and the kinds of deals that we see um, going through with them, the trading companies is definitely something they're very, very good at. Um, and also I find particularly where we've got a situation where um, they're certainly not looking for kind of adverse credit deals or deals that don't fit because there's a kind of credit issue there. Really what they're great at is deals that don't really tick all the conventional boxes and so need someone to be able to look at the overall situation and make a commercial decision as to whether um, you know there's a good enough level of risk appetite to proceed with the deal and we find them to be incredibly good at this. Okay, just wrapping up on the lender section with some changes in um, rates from other lenders. So first of all, Molo have made reductions across their range. So their pricing now starts from 2.37%. They're able to lend to individuals and limited companies. Skipton have increased their five-year fixed rates. Their pricing now starts from 1.92. Um, I'm sure at 1.92, you'll realize that um, they're not lending to limited companies, it's individual only. We've also seen Zephyr Home Loans make reductions across their range of up to 20 basis points and also Kensington have released a new two year fixed rate so their pricing now starts from 2.79. Both Zephyr and Kensington are able to lend to SPVs and limited companies. Please do not let me talking about some of the pricing coming down for you um, into thinking that actually rates aren't going to be going up over the kind of coming months. Um, there's every expectation that base rate will be going up early February and um, when lenders are reducing pricing it's not that the cost of funds have come down on the money market that simply has not happened. It's purely that they're taking a sort of um, haircut as it were on their margins to try and drive in new business. So the cost of um, funds are actually increasing and therefore ultimately the cost of mortgage rates will be going up nonetheless, despite what I'm telling you in terms of lender activity in the last week. Now it's always interesting when lenders start tweaking criteria rather than just pricing because it really demonstrates an increased appetite to drive up business and clearly a very um, an increase in comfort in terms of risk as well. So for example, if a lender starts increasing their maximum loan to values, it would show reassurance in terms of where they think house prices are going. And that is exactly what Interbay Commercial have done. So Interbay have increased their maximum loan to value back up to 75%. It was pre 75%, sorry, 75% pre COVID. Um, it came down and now they've re really put it back up to that level. Now Interbay as a lender, um, they are a commercial lender so they're able to lend on commercial units, mixed use units, and also those really kind of lumpy properties, so large HMOs, multi-units, that kind of stuff. Now to complement their rate reduction, they have also made some adjustments to pricing um, in a downwards fashion, and they've also made some um, tweaks in terms of the kinds of paperwork, the level of paperwork they're asking um, from their applicants to kind of drive a smoother process. West One have made some um, adjustments to their appetite for um, credit blips, shall we say, um, on their range. So they're now accepting on their sort of W1 product range 
um, well, anybody with a default that's no more than £500 um, and not within the last 72 months. So the actual wording, it's probably easier if I just read this out to you. They, they, um, to go to their prime product range, there can be no defaults over £500 within the last 72 months. So essentially, if you had a default for £350 in the last 72 months, that's fine. And no CCJs over £500 in the last 72 months. No unsecured missed payments in the last nought to six months and you can have one missed payment in the last one to twelve they've also got a second product range which is their w2 product range which is slightly more accommodating of more recent credit blips as well now we've also seen the suffolk for Build uh, building society who were the ipswich and um, they recently rebranded um, review their appetite on um, holiday letting and they're now accepting airbnb so some lenders um, who accept holiday lets are not accepting airbnb and the reason for that is really around um, sort of con concerns about people breaching um, lease terms. So if you imagine if you had a flat, often with the leasehold um, terms and conditions, you can't actually let the property as a holiday let. And there's loads of people who have these properties are doing Airbnbs on them. So that's one of the reasons why lenders are quite nervous about the kind of legislation that sits around whether what people are doing is actually legal. Um, so they are bringing Airbnb letting. Um, they're saying there's no special pricing for this. If you can get access their sort of traditional products, um, but they will be basing the rental calculation not on the Airbnb income generation, but on the traditional AST income the property would let at um, if it was let in a more sort of traditional way. So some more great changes from lenders on policy in the last week. Okay, a quick update on the housing market for you now. So Rightmove have released their latest data. Um, they're stating that the average price for property coming to the markets, this is not sold at prices, this is listed prices now, has risen by 0.3% this month to £341,019, which is 7.6% higher than this time last year. Now the data shows that first time buyer asking prices have hit a new record of 214,176 after a monthly jump of 1.4%. Rightmove says strong demand and continuing no, low numbers of available homes for sale has set the housing market frenzy to continue into the start of 2022. Now what's really interesting is this bit of data here. So the number of buyer inquiries is 15% higher than this time last year and the number of available homes for sale per estate agency branch has fallen further to a new record low of just 12. So essentially what we're saying is there are more people coming to the market looking to buy and yet there are not enough properties or even a reduced number of properties, a record low number of properties in fact, um, coming to market for sale. Now what they have caveated this is by saying that actually there, there are signs, very early signs, um, that more choice of properties for sale coming to the market is going to be increasing. Um, as the first working week of 2022 was the busiest start of the year ever for people requesting for agents to come and value their houses. There's obviously a lot of people that have um, made the decision that in 2022 they're going to, to sell. They're starting to really sound things out, understand what their property value is. And then um, we would expect to see some of those start coming to the market and then improve stock availability going forwards. Now, it would appear there's a bit of chatter amongst um, the MPs at the moment regarding concerns about increasing costs in the private rental sector. So Liberal Democrat MP Tim, Far Tim Farron sorry, has raised concerns surrounding the increasing costs during a government debate. Um, he said it's an inevit inevitable outcome as we continue to see areas where tenant demand outstrips long term rental supply adding that the short-term lets impacting the PRS as well as harming local tourism due to the imbalance in some communities and the lack of permanent residents using local services in certain areas. So for example, one district was set to have seen a 32% rise in the number of holiday lets in the past 12 months, which were not new bills but were previously available as homes. Now Timothy Douglas, who is a policy and campaigns manager of Property Mark said, it was reassuring to hear representations from politicians in this debate, from all parties reiterating our concerns that in many parts of the country, the balance of short-term lets and long-term private rented accommodation has tipped too far. He said it's vital that policy makers understand that short-term rental market is growing an attraction for many existing and new landlords, given its tax and regulatory framework, risking the availability and affordability of private rented sector homes. Now, during the debate, several references were made to the role of the stamp duty land tax and additional 3% surcharge on the purchases of additional homes. 
So what we're seeing here is, I guess, um, people really starting to acknowledge that holiday lets are really starting to erode the availability of longer term accommodation in certain parts of the country. Um, how this is going to pan out, where this is going to lead, I don't know, but I'm afraid I'm really just flagging this um, as a point of kind of concern amongst MPs at the moment and something they are definitely talking about. So one to keep on your radar. Now, lastly, in the last week, Shawbrook released some data which nearly gave me a conniption, if I'm honest. Um, apparently, an estimated 15% of landlords said they have no knowledge of the upcoming legislative changes to the EPCs. Um, so from 2025, as you guys will know because you're watching this video and therefore you're very keen on educating yourself, so you will know this already, um, properties will require, um, newly rented properties will require to have an EPC rating of C or above. Um, and existing tenancies will have until 2028 to comply with the new rules. Now, a quarter of the landlord survey said they had little or no knowledge of the forthcoming changes to the required EPC rating, um, with a large proportion, so 36% of landlords, with properties built, built pre-1940. So, Shawbrook's analysis showed that a significant number of landlords will be required to make the changes. On a regional level, four in ten landlords said their properties in London were built prior to 1940, with a similar picture in South West Scotland and Wales, Victorian properties making up 13% of private rental housing stock nationally, according to landlords. So really what this is saying to us is that actually there is going to be a huge, huge, huge number of properties which are going to need to be upgraded to meet the new EPC requirements. And yet there are um, around 25% of landlords who have little or no knowledge of the changes that are required. So, um, yeah, I'm really just throwing this out there again, that if you aren't aware of the changes, do get in touch with us. Um, we can run through them with you. Um, but likewise, um, when you're talking to your landlord friends, know that amongst landlords there is a really, really strong network. Um, it's probably worth discussing it with them as well so that no one has any nasty surprises down the line. And that's it from me this week. Thank you, as always, for joining me. I'll be back with you the same time next week from, hopefully, the new house. What kind of stage it's going to be in, I don't know. Um, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. My new office um, that I'm moving into is currently purple, so you are in for a treat next week. Wear your sunglasses while you're watching. Um, until then, if you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. 0345 345 6788. Have a look at our website, mortgagesforbusiness.co.uk. Until then, take care of yourselves and I will see you next time.